JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me. That is Lunchowskas. Today is the 16th of August, 2021. So yeah, welcome, everyone. Welcome to this Monday's morning session where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff, basically. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So um, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation. It should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, as always, quick mentioning of our GFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, check us out here on jfdbank.com and yep, click on the research tab right there on the top, guys. So. So now then jumping into the charts, the first one I want to pick up here is um, actually Nikkei 225. Um, so yep, uh, looking at this picture here, you can see that Nikkei continued to slide and well, it broke this upside support line, the one that I talked about last week and it um, it drifted lower closer to this uh, key support area here near this uh, 27,385 territory. And in a way for now, I would say, um, yes, uh, the bears are getting excited, I would say. However, I would, uh, in order to kind of get more comfortable with further declines, well, for me, I would need to see a nice good daily close below this area here. Um, the fact that we already closed below the 200-day EMA, yes, of course, that kind of gives uh, a bit more uh, reassurance for the sellers. Um, however, as I said, um, this area previously did act somehow a as a good area of support so let's see if we can overcome it um, for now I'm just I'm going to be leaning towards the downside but um, very carefully um, now um, oh we can see in the chat room here Erica good morning to you too I hope you are, you had a fantastic week and I hope everybody had a fantastic weekend guys um, but coming back to the markets now uh, Shanghai composite for example here the situation is slightly different I mean it's still holding on here um, first of all we got rid of we, we, we kind of violated and uh, ignored this upside line so we can actually get rid of it now um, today um, you can see that we have remained slightly in the positive territory or I would say we still remain slightly in the positive territory because the index is still trading so um, but we're very close to this downside line taken from the high of the 28th of June so in order to go for for the upside um, yes a push through that downside line would be needed at least that of course not to mention uh, some other barriers here on the way but let's go slowly step by step on this one and uh, yeah if we clear that downside line then we'll go for the upside um, for the downside I would prefer to see a drop somewhere below this area first this 3470 territory right here um, and then kind of uh, go for lower levels so yep let's see how that's gonna play out here guys uh, but at the moment the moment yep um, it is an interesting one. Um, there is potential here for this on the, for this one to go higher. However, uh, a break of this downside line would be needed. Um, now the German index DAX yesterday, oh sorry, yesterday on Friday we pushed higher. We created a new all-time high, as you can see here. Um, so yep, let's uh, see what we can do with it. Uh, and now uh, from here, uh, so first of all, probably let me just clear up the chart here and let me start fresh um, I'm, certainly we do have a bunch of uh, some upside lines here that we can draw some medium-term ones but for now in the short run let's stick to this little short-term upside support line right here 
uh, this one's taken from the low of the 19th, 19th of July. So in a way, um, if we take a look at the cash index right now, for example, we'll see that the uh, that the price is correcting a little bit lower here. We're currently trading at around 15,900, slightly above it, um, basically below, well below uh, Friday's close. Um, and in a way, what could happen here, we could see maybe this uh, this Friday's candle as a potential maybe doji here, but um, or shooting star, actually, not, sorry, not a doji, but a shooting star here. Um, but um, yeah, again, uh, also what could, could be interesting here as well is that, for example, if, um, um, if the uh, if the if the price here, for example, if this 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 today's candle is going to be will open up somewhere well nicely below this uh, below um, below Friday's open, for example, uh, then we could see also a nice island reversal, which also seems. To, kind of is a, a nice little uh, reversal signal. But again, for now, guys, I would say that as long as it stays above this um, this short-term upside line, there is still potential for uh, this index to move higher. So let's keep an eye on that one. Um, and if it breaks this upside line and then falls, of course, somewhere below this little territory right here, this uh, 15,700 zone, if we fall below it, then we, at the same time, we could see it drop below the 21-day EMA and potentially more uh, sellers could join in. So keep that in mind. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average on Friday pushed higher, but of course it remained in the positive territory. But as you can see by this candle, um, we did saw a bit of a retracement. So um, if we take a look at the cash index right now, we'll see that there is a bit of a retracement happening further. Yes, the the index is currently trading at around 35,372 mark, approximately around there. So um, basically we're back below this, um, this previous all-time high, I would say. Say uh, near the three thirty-five thousand five hundred and uh, uh, well, roughly around five hundred level. And uh, yep, if it stays below that thirty-five thousand five hundred level, then we might see a bit of a corrective move here to the downside as well, guys. So you see, um, as I mentioned to you last week, guys, always wait for that confirmation uh, for that reversal. And um, yes, and on on Thursday, I, I told you that. Um, it could continue rallying and look at this. I mean, it, it could, it, it did re rally and did push further north. I mean, it created a new all-time high. So that's why we always wait for a uh, kind of like a confirmation reversal for a confirmation. So um, at the moment, I'm not saying that this could be it, um, but, um, or how should I say, this is it. I am not saying that, but it's could be it. I mean, but again, in that even in that situation, um, we are still taking slowly everything because again, we could class that little reversal as a potential correction before another possible leg of buying. Because for example, here, as you can see, it actually also made a new like for example here at the end of July, it also pushed higher, created a new all-time high, then drifted back down, tested the 21-day EMA, reversed, and pushed for another all-time high. So. As you understand, guys, I mean, this is where uh, you need to be very careful here. Um, so, yeah, uh, long story short, if it starts falling somewhere, uh, if it, or should I say, if it continues to trade below that 35,500 level, uh, yes, I will consider a bit of a corrective move here towards that 21-day EMA. Uh, the S&P 500 is also a similar story. Um, we are seeing a slight correction in the on the cash index right now so uh, basically everything's kind of uh, working out okay here um, so we are um, after we've managed to hit a new all-time high on Friday um, and that level was let me just quickly oh there we go uh, 4468 territory approximately around there now the index is sitting at around 40 uh, 4453 level so again also potential for a island reversal here uh pattern so yep that's uh that's what's happening uh, or that's could what this is what could happen um so let's see if that's if that's going to work out or not but again if it if it does work out then yes my next target is the 21 day ema 
Um, NASDAQ, uh, NASDAQ 100 didn't go uh, to create a new all-time high on um, on Friday, but um, it, it did push higher, it did stay in the positive territory. Looking at the cash index right now, we're seeing that we are getting a bit of a corrective move as well to the downside, but not it's not a... A uh, huge one, so let's be very careful. If you want to aim for the upside, well, probably stick to the current all-time high, which is around the 15,184, 85, approximately around there. If we clear that, then yes, we'll go for the upside. If we don't, then, well, I mean, I'm still going to aim for that 21-day EMA again. Um, now, the dollar index. Um, so, we drifted heavily to the downside today um, on Friday, as you can see, but um, the holdup cured near the 21 day EMA, where it still is uh, I mean, sitting. The index is still sitting there. So, um, what I said to you previously last week that even if we correct below this, uh, we fall below this 92.80 zone. My next target is the 21 day EMA, which we managed to reach perfectly. Um, and if it holds, yep, I could consider maybe a bit of a, a move back up. So for now, I'm going to stick to that idea. Um, and uh, But if you're a little bit more on the cautious side, probably what you can do here is just wait for a move back above this uh, territory. Um, back above the 92.80 zone, if it climbs above it, then yes, uh, we could go for uh, for the upside. If it doesn't, then we, if it pushes higher, then we could see a nice uh, hold up here and then a drift back down. So again, long story short, guys, um, it's going to be the fact that, that it's currently getting a hold up above this 21 day EMA. That's good news for the buyers. But if you're a little bit more, uh, if you are a little bit more, a cautious, a more cautious buyer, then wait for, um, wait for a move. Um, wait for a move, um, for above the 92.80 zone. Um, I can see chat from here, uh, Eric, uh, question. Let me just quick, quickly go through it. Um, 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 okay. So in terms of the political and, uh, the, these situations, I mean, uh, certainly, we could see um, minor effects, but um, it's not going to be uh, something, or I wouldn't say at the moment, at this point in time, in terms of, Eric, in terms of your question, um, <laughs> this is the thing. In, it's it's not always. It sometimes could be just a small thing that could trigger the market, and um, it kind of then depends on how far it will escalate. Because we get these uh, fluctuations in in the world in terms of government decisions and uh, different little conflicts. Uh, um, these, yes, it, they give a some sort of a short-term kind of uh, effect on the market, but um, it it always you always need to keep an eye on how it escalates. So, for example, even with the same uh, coronavirus, when last year when everything started uh, kicked off in already in January, February, um, but then um, every, everybody was watching the situation, how it gonna, how it's going to go further, and then when suddenly governments decided to perform these lock downs um, you can see the market kind of this is when the market took it off, took off so um, again um, I'm not saying that yes uh, the whole situation with Afghanistan uh, will let's say or could not impact uh, on the brig on a bigger picture of the market but um, again like I said just probably the suggestion here is to keep an eye on it uh, to keep an eye on how it escalates because if it's gonna just you know calm down then yes I mean it you know it, it it might not go further but um i think that uh when we need something more economic um that could um that could kind of really let's say affect um the markets the equities and kind of so that they would start reversing lower it's a kind of similar uh, story, let's, for example, with South Africa. As, as you know, that there are uh, problems right now in South Africa. And uh, yes, the uh, once the riots kind of kicked off, um, the South African rand took a hit. But again, this is where the, it um, it kind of goes that if if it continues, if it's not maintained, the rights. I mean, then uh, then yes, of course, the rand could continue falling. Um, but if the situation gets a little bit better, then yep, this is where uh, investors could start jumping back into the country, into the currency, and uh, or 
in, in specific assets. So, so anyway, long story short, I mean, like I said, it could, but you need to keep an eye the the situation of Afghanistan. It could affect, yes, in the long run, but again, if if this will calm down, then you know, it's we need we always need a little bit more time to kind of, and the market needs to a little bit more time to evaluate. Uh, always remember that. Uh, the investors, I mean, they, there's always some a bit of time for profit taking. So, and uh, then once everybody's <laughs> when the once everybody's cleared, uh, then we you know you start selling off the market and everything. And start, this is when the uh, the uh, us retail traders start jumping in, thinking that you know the market uh, will continue rallying, and then actually it reverses. So again, you need to be very careful with that. And uh, I always go like that if you're you know, go slowly, go step by step on this one. But coming back to DXY here, um, for the downside, what I need here is a drop below this 92.32 level somewhere around here. And then I'll get a little bit more comfortable with the downside. Gold. Uh, Gold is quite interesting. We managed to recover um, the losses made. The, I think that it was, yep. Uh, yeah, we recovered all the losses made um, during that uh, Monday, last Monday's um, morning drop. And uh, by the end of the week, we recovered everything. Um, so now we're seeing maybe a bit of a corrective move back down here. So in other words, um, in other words, let me just uh, adjust this a little bit because again, this is it looks a little bit messy here. So let me just start fresh. So one thing for sure, what you need to keep an eye on is this for now in the, in the near term is this little short term uh, tentative downside resistance line uh, taken from the well, actually it's more of a from here actually so yes yeah, something like this so this tentative downside resistance line taken from the high of the first of June um, again um, at the moment yeah you can see that yes we we are still in kind of a kind of correction mode here to the upside so I would say that if um, if this uh, if these EMAs together with the downside line continue to provide resistance then another slide could be possible so um, if the move doesn't happen uh, all the way here to what's towards the uh, higher levels here then uh, what you can do here is if you're looking for some downside on this one then maybe a drop back below the 1750 territory might do the trick for a few more sellers and then yes uh, more of them could start joining in again for now I would I would probably leave gold here and just uh, continue observing the price action because for the upside what I need to see here is, is uh, here is um, not only a break of this downside line but also a push above this 1834 level <coughs> Um, WTI oil. Um, so this one's tricky, and this is the this is the thing that I was talking about uh, last week. That basically, let's see if this uh, commodity will form here um, a possible uh, descending triangle pattern. Where I mean, which of course, according to all the TA rules, tends to break to the uh, downside so again but uh, the moment yes we're moving a little bit lower here uh, we're pushing back below the 67.58 territory I spoke about that level and said that if we drop below it and we fall below this 108 EMA as well then yes uh, we'll aim for that 65.11 territory for now everything is on track um, I can see in the chat room here Evo good morning to you to um, so uh, ripple uh, ripple it continues to rally I mean I mean spectacular move here on ripple um so um okay so we managed to overcome this 1.10 zone um so yep uh, that's good news uh for the bulls and we've pushed higher on sunday here we reached the area near the 1.35 territory and uh, this is where we we're seeing a bit of a hold up um something like of a doji has been formed here and that means that maybe we could see a bit of a corrective move here to the downside however i'll sc scrap that idea if we um if we start pushing through this 1.35 level straight away um, because again uh, then if we push above it and we stay above it then yes of course um, we could consider continue targeting the upside where my next target would be around here in the, the high of the 18th of May um, near the 1.7046 
Um, now, in terms of the downside on this one, well, again, um, we are still trading above this upside line here. So uh, even if we push to the downside here, we could see maybe a bit of a, a uh, we will, we could class this move as a correction, especially if it falls back below the 1.10 zone. If it falls, if it falls below that, then um, yep, we will uh, consider a move towards this upside support line. Um, Ethereum, very quickly on Ethereum. Um, so yep. Um, this one's not as spectacular as Ripple, but uh, nevertheless still grinding higher. So, so far, so good. Um, this idea has been working out here, but uh, the only thing is that it, we, we didn't really see a clear test of this upside line. So for now, I would say that I'm going to continue aiming higher. My next target is the 3,443 level. I'm going to go slowly on this and then I'll see where it goes from there. Um, AUD NZD very quickly so continues to drift lower it dropped below this hurdle right here the low of last week near the 1.0454 level and uh, yep now my next target is the uh, 1.0418 level right here and let me just refresh my memory here uh, yep that's the lowest point of um, December of 2020 so good potential target this steep downside line continues to provide uh, resistance. So, yep, in a way, everything's working out here well for the sellers. Now, jumping into USDJPY very quickly. So, um, here um, you can see we had we, this level here, the one that I kept talking about, um, continued to provide resistance. And, uh, yep, we got a nice hold up here uh, last week. And you can see the effects here. So, we drifted back down. What I was talking about in terms of the downside, I would need to, uh, I need to see a uh, drop actually not only below this area, which still could be fine, but uh, I could already start looking at some downside if we fall somewhere below this little hurdle here. The 109.36 level. Um, and uh, this also also coincides with the 100 day EMA shown as, as the green line. So uh, in other words, um, if we clear that level, my next target is going to be going to be the uh, lowest point of August here near the 108.72 level. And then we'll take it from there. Let me just actually put the arrow just exactly here. And like I said, yep, we will take it from there. Um, for now, yes, um, it's quite interesting what's going to happen further here. Um, it's not really as um, as of much of a weakness of the dollar here, but more of a, um, as equities are kind of drifting a little bit to the downside here, yen buying is increased right now. So, um Traders, some traders are are trying to jump into something a little bit more safe. Um, so, yep, let's see if that can this tendency continues. Um, but for for now, from the technical side here on the um, on USDJPY, yes, if it drops below this and stays below this 109.36 level, my next target is the 108.72. Uh, quick update on the USDCHF. Um, this one's more a bit more reflective of the um, of the DXY index. Um, but um, yep, uh, as we can see, drifted back below these two uh, downside lines, the one that I mentioned mentioned before. So, uh, long story short, for now, this is of course is looking a little bit more bearish than um, than bullish. But um, in order for me to let's say consider maybe a bit of a, m a move to the downside, I would actually prefer to wait for a drop uh, somewhere below this hurdle the uh, 0.9118 because at the same time we would be placed below all of the EMAs here on my daily chart and then potentially more sellers could join in because on the other hand um, some of you probably are looking at this uh, from a different angle and um, because if this provides support somewhere here, if these two, if these all these EMAs provide support somewhere, and then we see a nice reversal back up here, then maybe we just maybe we could see a nice little inverted head and shoulders pattern here. But again, uh, it's not confirmed yet, so let's uh, let's. Um, I'm just throwing this out for you guys so that you would be aware of suddenly this reverses sharply back to the upside. Um, but again, for now, I'm taking a careful stance on this one and uh, I'm going to wait for a drop below the 0.9118 level first before targeting the downside. GBPUSD very quickly on this because I, because I, before I run out of time, actually, um, this one's stuck. Um, it's stuck in between these two lines and uh, yeah, I mean, still the same game plan remains for me. I need to see, for the upside, I need to see a break of this downside line and the push up of the 
the 1.3873 territory. For the downside, I need to see a drop below this hurdle right here, near the 1.3787. And then, yes, more sellers could join in. Uh, Euro USD. Um, so this one's tricky. Um, we're currently getting a hold up here near this, um, near the uh, the 21 day EMA, or I would say slightly below that 21 day EMA. However, it still has potential to move higher, and this move higher would still be classed as a as a temporary correction because, as you can see, we are uh, trading below this downside line. But uh, after Friday's sharp reversal here to the upside, yep, um, there is, like I said, there. There is a potential uh, potential for this one for a continuation move to the upside but for that i would need to see a nice good push above the uh 21 day ema because the idea here that i talked about last week was that if we pop up the 1.1752 territory my next target is the 21 day ema which we managed to reach so great that's great news um now let's see how, if we can now overcome this 21 day ema and go for some higher levels so guys, that's it for this session. I really appreciate your time, guys. I really do. And I really appreciate your views, your likes, your comments, guys, really helps a lot. So thank you very much. I hope you found this session useful. If you want to catch me tomorrow morning, as always, at my Traders Espresso, 6 o'clock GMT time. For now, have a wonderful trading day. Stay safe, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.